Hi, I'm Chris with Sanderson Test Prep, and in this video, we're going to take a look at an optimization question that's very common for students who are taking Calc. So in Calc 1, when first learning optimization, the fenced garden or fenced portion of a field kind of question is very common, and we're going to take a look at two iterations of that question here in this video. So let's take a look at this problem. Tatiana wants to create a fenced rectangular garden in her yard. She has a total of 200 feet of fencing to work with. What is the maximum area of the garden that she can create? So first of all, let's see if we can get a little bit of a visual on this. We're looking to create this rectangular garden. And we know that we have dimensions of a rectangle. And although you might be used to using length and width for our purposes, we want to get really comfortable using X and Y because that's the traditional way that you're gonna see it written out and that's what you're gonna be used to deriving. So it's hard to introduce other variables. So for any of these kinds of optimization questions, I encourage you to stick with the X, Y notation rather than using L and W if it's a rectangle question or A, B, and C for a triangles question. If you can, try to put everything in terms of X and Y. So here, if we have our dimensions of this garden as x and y, then let's take a look and see what we can do to figure out the maximum area. So first let's write out a couple equations that we know. We know area of a rectangle is length times width, and in this case that's going to be x times y. But we also know the perimeter. The perimeter of a rectangle is going to be 2x, and I'll fill in the other dimensions here just so we can see them, plus 2y. So now we have to decide which of these functions we are looking for the maximum or minimum of whenever we're dealing with optimization. And here, the area function is the one that we are looking to find the maximum of, which means this is the function that we are going to ultimately have to derive. But in order to do that, we need to see if we can convert this expression that we have for our area function of x times y. Let's see if we can convert this into an expression that contains only one variable. And you're going to be able to do that through what we sometimes refer to as our constraint function, which means it's the function that you have a set value for. And for our purposes here, that's going to be our perimeter function with that set value of 200. So 200 would be the perimeter because that's the available fencing. So that's the set amount of fencing that we can have for the perimeter of this garden. Now in order to reduce your area function down to only one variable, we want to use a little bit of substitution. So here, let's see if we can isolate one of our variables. So simplify the perimeter function first. We can divide everything by two. This one happens to work out nicely where the math on that is easy enough for us to simplify things a little bit. And if we, well, let me rewrite that a little neater. And if we simplify this, we can subtract x from the other side and we get 100 minus x is equal to y. And now we can take that value and we can substitute it in over here to our area function. So let's see what that'll look like for area once we do that. And I'm gonna write that down below just so we have plenty of room. So here our area will be x times y is 100 minus x. So when we substitute that in, we now have a function just in terms of x. And for the purposes of Finding the derivative and making that easy, we can rewrite this with the x distributed into the parentheses. That would be 100x minus x squared. So now let's talk about why we need to find that derivative. So we have come up with an area expression in terms of x only. We don't have any y's to worry about. So what does finding the derivative actually do for us? Well, if you think about it, from a graph perspective, and I'm gonna put this down here off to the side just as a conceptual reminder of what we're looking at here. But if you think of a graph, any graph, if you have a squared function, so we see that we have x squared. 
So if you have a parabola that's downward facing, then that means that maximum value would be the vertex of that parabola. And same thing, if it were a different function, you happen to have one that were upward facing, then that vertex would be the minimum. And as you've probably seen, if you're watching this video, that means you've probably had some exposure to optimization questions. So when you are talking about optimization questions, you will very commonly have a maximum or minimum value asked of you. That is what optimization is. It's finding that max or that min. So when we learned about derivatives conceptually at first, and we learned that the derivative is the slope of a tangent line, then if we find the derivative and set it equal to zero, then what we're really finding is that maximum or minimum value because when the derivative is equal to zero, that means that you have a horizontal tangent line and a horizontal tangent line is going to allow you to find where that maximum or minimum value would be. And again, it's still going to be a horizontal tangent at the vertex regardless of if it's an upward or downward facing parabola. So that's why we want to go ahead and find the derivative in order to solve for our optimization questions. So here we have, oops, let me change colors on that, back to blue. So here we have a prime would be the derivative of this function. And hopefully we're comfortable taking derivatives here using power rule, derivative of 100x is 100, derivative of x squared is 2x, 100 minus 2x, we're setting that equal to zero. And from here, hopefully we can do the algebraic portion pretty comfortably. So move 2x to the other side, 100 equals 2x, divide by 2, x equals 50. And if we know that y is equal to 100 minus x, then 100 minus 50 for y, actually I'll just move this up a little bit. So 100 minus 50 would equal y. And that means that y would be 50 as well. So now that we have x and we have y, we need to find the maximum area. So let's never forget what the question is actually asking us to solve. And that's why I highlighted that at the beginning. So this step is a step that's often forgotten. A lot of uh, students and test takers get excited about solving the variables and then forget to plug them back in to actually answer the question. But here the maximum area is going to be x times y. And when we plug that in, 50 times 50 will give us 2,500. So our maximum area would be a 2,500 square foot garden in this case for Tatiana to make in so this will be 2,500 feet squared in her yard. So that's a very common iteration of one of our optimization questions when dealing with rectangular fencing. But let's take a look at one more example that has a little bit of a curveball in it. So we're gonna look at a very similar question. Let's scroll down here. And this is gonna be a little bit different because the question it's still asking maximum area, but the question includes something new that I wanna point out. And it says here that the side of her house will act as a barrier for one side of the garden. Now the reason that is important is because it's going to change the way that our drawing is going to look. So here's the house, and I'll try to color code this a little bit. And then here's the garden that we are making. The fencing for the garden is only going to be required on three sides of the garden. The house is the barrier on the other side. So we can still have our values of x and y for those sides. And some of our equations are going to look pretty similar to what we saw before. But one of them is going to look different. Let's check the area equation. Would that area function look similar? Yeah, it would. So here, area, it's still a rectangle. Area of that rectangle is still gonna be x times y. So the area is not changing, but the perimeter is gonna change a little bit. Because before we had two x plus two y, and if you look here, 
we have 2x, but just plus y. We don't have the plus 2y in this case. So that's the important difference here to set the tone for how we're going to approach this question. The rest of the process is going to work very similarly to what we saw in that first example. But just make sure that your initial setup includes the adjustment for the equations if they tell you, and you will see this a lot with questions where a farmer is fencing off an area, but it's along a river or it's along a road. So you don't have to fence that side. So a lot of times when you're looking at questions related to fencing for optimization, it's that perimeter equation that's going to change when you do your initial setup. And you want to make sure that you're careful about how that perimeter equation changes based on the information they give you in the question. So from here, we can follow through pretty similarly. And I'm going to go through this a little bit faster since we already had exposure in the first question. Here, the perimeter is our constraint equation with a value of 200. So 200 is equal to 2x plus y. We can subtract the 2x to get our value for y and then plug that into our area equation. And so to make sure we have enough room, I'll move that down here. So our area will be x times 200 minus 2x. We can distribute. And that's 200x minus 2x squared. And as I explained in the previous question, we understand conceptually now why we have to take the derivative. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Oops, I forgot to write in my x above. Let me slide this over and sneak an x in there. So x, when you distribute it, you do get 200x minus 2x squared. Take the derivative. That's going to be 200 minus 4x. And remember, for optimization questions, we are setting that first derivative equal to 0. Bring the 4x over to the other side. 200 equals 4x. x is going to equal 50. And y in this case, when you plug that back in, you would have 200 minus 2 times 50 which will be 200 minus 100, which is 100 for y. So now that we have x and y, let's move our area down here, just again, create a little more room for ourselves. So to answer the question of maximum area, here we have our area is equal to 50 times 100. And compared to the previous question, you can see that we can actually create an area of 5,000. So it's twice as large. So you can have 5,000 square feet of garden if you can save some of your fencing by not having to fence that fourth side. And if we think about that logically, hopefully that makes some sense because if you are going to be fencing in an area, well, if you don't have to use your fencing along the house, then that means that you can probably expand one of your other dimensions and end up with a larger space that's fenced in. So if you have any questions on optimization questions, uh, we will take a look at other examples in a few other videos. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.